աղավնիները համոզեցին, ասին, որ իրենց վրա չեն գրակեր, հրանդ հավատաց, թե պետ երկ չոտ հավատաց թե աղավնի մներ, բայց գրակեցին, նախատեսաց էր, մեկ կանի տարի առաջեսաց էր ինձին, իմ մահը պետ էլ ավոտքիս վրա կանքնած, Եթե մեզի հարցնեք, անմիշտ հաղթական պիտի կանգնի, անաղարդ արձանի պես։ The dogs swayed him, saying no one fires on them. Հրանդ բիլև դեմ, ոդո թիմիտ, he believed he was a dog. But they shot him. He had foreseen it, he told me a few years ago. My dad will be on my feet, standing up, not lying down in bed. May he rest in life. If you ask us, he will always stand victorious, like an immaculate statue. These are the words of wonderful poet Zahrat after Hrandings death. It's translated into English by poet Lola Kondakcian. Welcome everyone, whether you are on Zoom, on Facebook, or watching later on YouTube. I'm Tate Vikaivazian, the director of the Armenian Institute. Today is 15 years since Randin's life was cruelly taken. For 15 years, the Armenian Institute has kept his memory, his ideas, and his light alive by commemorating this day. And today we have the incredible honor of being joined by Garo Pailan. He will be introduced by my colleague and the Armenian Institute's good friend, Nuritza Matosyan. She is a writer, filmmaker, performer, and human rights activist. Nuritz Matosyan is, uh, is a founder member and former director of the Armenian Institute. And she introduced Randing to London in 2005 and made the first documentary film after his death uh, for the 48th day memorial after his murder, 19th January, 2007. The longer award-winning version of her film Parenting, part of two nations, has been released online for this event and is available on Armenian Institute YouTube channel. I think the link will be shared in the chat. I encourage everyone to go and watch this film. Beautiful. Before I invite Nuritza to start the event, a few very quick points. You've, the event is being recorded, as you will know, and being live streamed. So turn your videos off if you don't want to be seen. You're all mute, but I would encourage you to put your questions in the chat, talk to us, tell us why you're joining, where you're joining from, and share your memories of ranting. With the same with Facebook comments, please join us there. We'll, we'll be reading and monitoring them. As always, no hate speech will be tolerated, and this is an event after hate speech, about hate speech after all. You will be immediately removed from the session. Um, if you're new to the Armenian Institute, I will encourage you to check out our website, read about pro our programs, our library, listen to our podcast, and read our new magazine, Danazan. The link also will be in the chat. And lastly, I would like to thank my incredible colleague, Chai Kerkona, Nick Matthew, Olivia Melkonian. Thank you for your dedication. Dear Nerissa, I'd like to invite you to start the event. Good evening, friends, and a Akshamlar, Akadashlar. Good evening, Garo Pailan. We're very grateful to all our friends from all over the world for joining us today. Today is the 19th of January, a black day in my diary, and I'm sure yours as well. When we lost, one of our brightest leaders, one of our brightest thinkers, and also a, an innovator in the sphere of human rights. Around the world, many Armenian communities will be marking this day. And our thoughts are with the Harantink's family and with Harantink Foundation in Istanbul. Every year, the Armenian Institute honors and remembers Harantink as a uh, we were told, and we, I do remember very vividly his talk. It was on the 10th anniversary of Agos, 
He gave the most eloquent and soul-stirring speech with his warmth, simplicity, and foresight. And I was so fortunate. He was accompanied by his daughter, Delal. We had wide ranging talks and I also filmed him. I felt we had so much to learn from him and we shouldn't waste a single word. We had discussed making a film, but in the event that was not to be, and I had to do it on my own as a testimony to him. But this evening, we're fortunate to welcome once again, Garo Pailan. Pariega Caro, London. It is truly a distinct honor to introduce you. And at a very busy time, I know you said you had 12 uh, engagements already today. For my part, speaking to you will be the closest I can ever come to speaking with her and think. I hope you will tell us how he inspired you and how you worked together. Everyone has heard and knows something about Garo Pailan. Of course, it's not his real name. His real name was Armenian, but these names were banned in 1934, and he was given the name Pailan. In Armenian, Pailun is shining. And here, this man is an example, a shining example of the new kind of Armenian that Harat Dink personified open-minded, courageous, resourceful, inventive, confident, and above all, democratic, and devoted to justice and fairness for all. Gara Pailan is from Malatya. We visited there together with Khosrov Dink, and he told me that the characteristic of Malatyatsis is strength and stubbornness. In fact, Garapailan is the founder of the HDP, the People's Democratic Party, MP for Diyarbekir and spokesperson for the economy. He is the most prominent and one of only three Armenian parliamentarians in Turkey today. His career continues Herantik's struggle for democratization and dignity for all Turkey's peoples, regardless of religion, gender, sexuality, raising awareness of the rights of minorities. Earlier, he promoted bilingual education in Turkey, and he was the director of several Armenian schools in Istanbul before joining the BDP, the Peace and Democracy Party. He was then invited to join a new opposition party and became a founder of the HDP, which is the People's Democratic Party where he represented Armenian interests, among others. His party recognizes the Armenian genocide. And please note now that many members of that central committee are imprisoned along with journalists, academics, and others at this time. On his election, Garapailan vow vowed to fight the denial of the Armenian genocide and has repeatedly asked for the recognition in parliament. His speech in May 2017 is dramatic. He showed the house pictures of Armenian parliamentarians who were arrested and killed in 1915. He was interrupted. His text was deleted from the records of the parliament. He was attacked physically by a large group of fellow parliamentarians who surrounded him in a brawl. And for three days, he was suspended from parliament. Only yesterday, once again, as he does each year, he asked the parliament to investigate the murder of Haranti. Now, as well as consistently speaking out on Armenian issues in Turkey, including prominent calls for peace during the 2020 Karabakh war, Garapailan has been active in a wide range of social justice issues, especially the struggle for peace and a democratic settlement in the long running conflict in Turkey's majority Kurdish regions. Aro, we are eager to hear how you have been active in the most recent initiatives to open borders between Armenia and Turkey. And we have an, the amazing clip to show you later. We've asked Aro to speak about hate speech since he has been the target of threats and hatred on a daily basis. 
Two page ads with his pictures have even been printed in newspapers demanding that he be silenced. He has urged prosecutors in parliament to act against hate speech. Hate speech, which turns to hate crime. Nevertheless, he continues to work for reconciliation and peace. We will question, we will take questions after his talk and you may write yours in the chat, please as briefly as you can. And finally, a new film on Rating, Memory Too Low for Words by Amit Kivanch, collates Harantik's public speeches in a very imaginative way, and it has just been released. It's an incredibly powerful film, which you can watch online. Thank you. Dara, would you like to start, please? Yeah. Parev, Paringun, Paririgun. Hi everyone, merhabalar, iyi akşamlar. Harkan Knorov, uh, Harkan Knorov, uh, Yev. Yeah, I guess I'm going to speak in English. Um, uh, hello everyone, uh, this is the Hranting Day, and uh, this has been, it has been 15 years since we lost him. And 15 years ago, uh, after his assassination, I was, on that payment, just 10 minutes after his assassination, uh, I left my um, shop and I was there in 10 minutes and I am still there and I'm still waiting for justice for Ranting for 15 years. Ranting was a romantic and he thought Turkey would be a democratic country and he struggled for it. But as I said, he was a romantic. He just ignored the bad you know, uh, tradition of Turkey and just he ignored and he just walked with the good uh, and uh, peoples of Turkey. He just uh, struggled against that status quo with the democratic Turks, democratic Kurds and democratic Armenians. And he thought he could change Turkey uh, into a democratic country. We were uh, about to be there because almost all of the taboos uh, we were getting rid of and we were we have uh, started to talk about everything all the taboos and Hrant Dink was a really important figure to just get rid of those taboos because as you know after the Armenian genocide the survivors of the, of the Armenian genocide uh, in Turkey were sentenced to silence that was maybe the biggest you know, sentence uh, to the Armenians who insisted to live in Turkey. Uh, we were silent for three generations, as uh, all the Armenians know who continue to live in Turkey. All our fathers, you know, parents, uh, just told us to be silent about the uh, catastrophes that we lived. And we were silent. And even we used nicknames, as you know, we couldn't use our names as well, just like I did. My father's name was Avadis, and he had to use Halis in Sitar when he was doing his business. And when I was in his shop, he called me Kaya in Sitar of Garo. You know, we were hiding that we were Armenians. We were trying to behave like we were not Armenians. You no, know? but. Now, one day, Ranting uh, was on the screen and he said, I'm an Armenian, I'm from Turkey, I'm from Al Malatya, and uh, my name is Ranting. And he started to tell about his story. And it was really shocking for all the Armenians in Turkey. And because somebody was talking about our story, but he was using a you know, um, peaceful language, peaceful rhetoric, and he was convincing people. Of course, it was you no know, dangerous, but he was a courageous man and he ignored those dangers. And, and he thought in those, that era, 
with his uh, now liberal socialist leftist friends, he could turn Tur Turkey into a democratic country. But you know, for the status quo, Armenian hatred is a useful card, just like they use that, that hatred against Kurds, against the G Greek and the Armenians. They have three cards, I can say. And uh, Hranting was somebody who was not suitable for that, you know, uh, uh, for that uh, stereotype. And he was somebody from Anatolia. He was just like other men. He was telling uh, his story sincerely, and he was convincing people. That was the biggest, biggest threat to the status quo. He was convincing people. I saw you know, him with so many nationalists who, whose heart is you know, not open to the Armenians at all, who had not known about, he haven't seen any Armenian, but they knew Armenians as you no know, bad people. And in, in five minutes, he, he was breaking all the you know, ISIS in the, the, their hearts, and he could uh, you know, go in that heart and have that heart. You no, know, it was very important. And it was a big, big threat, big, big you know, danger for the status quo. And they thought they had to get rid of Hranting. And uh, as you know, he just published the news about Sabia Gökçen, who is the you know, sister or sister-in-law, uh, daughter-in-law of Atatürk. He said he, she is a you no know, Armenian. She, she was an Armenian. And uh, our you know, army just announced uh, a declaration saying that whoever says Sabia Gökçen is an Armenian is a traitor. And just after that, Ranting, uh, they called Ranting to come to, the, uh, to, uh, to, to a place. And he was you know, uh, somehow um, said, it's, you are in a dangerous way and you should uh, not continue in this way, telling about these stories. They warned him somehow, but it was a threat for him. But he didn't stop. Uh, and moreover, he, they said he is just insulting Turkishness. And they, he, he, they sentenced him as well. And his name was on the media uh, targeting him as a traitor. And as you know, Hranting just wrote about this, and he knew that uh, something bad might happen, but he didn't leave his country. I have to say, I even warned him to leave the country for a period, but he didn't listen to me. He didn't listen to anybody. He said, I'm going to live in this country, but unfortunately, they killed him. Um, on that day, uh, I have to say I was not surprised because the you know, footsteps of that assassination was coming. Now everybody saw it, and we knew that this state did several crimes, and unpunished crimes would lead to new crimes, and footsteps were coming. We saw it, but Hranting was a romantic, as I said, he didn't listen to anybody, and he just continued his life. But they killed him because he was dangerous. Just after that day, um, about his funeral, as you know, hundreds of thousands of people att attended to that uh, funeral and 90% of them were not Armenians at all. They were Turks, Kurds, Assyrians, and other peoples. And they all shouted, we are Hrant, we are Armenians. And that day, I have to say, as another romantic Mal uh, people, Armenian from Malatya, I told Hrant, I told this is it. Now, Hrant, uh, with his you no, know, with his life, he couldn't reach to a democratic Turkey, but with his that, you no, know, he is going to make Turkey as a democratic country because this is it. In an Armenian's funeral, hundreds of thousands of people are you know, walking and they are shouting, we are Armenians. That was very important. Um, 
in those years, we just asked for justice for Hrant because we knew that if we can reach to that justice, none of us will be killed by the state again because we knew, it, we knew, knew that the murderer is the state, not that one called the young boy called Okun Samast because uh, uh, the state was in this you know, assassination you know, by its you know, uh, army, by its uh, you know, uh, intelligence service, by it, it is officers and several officers were there. There were hundreds of evidences that the state was the murderer. And we thought we would reach to justice. But unfortunately, Erdogan, you know, who came to Hranting's home that night, promising Raquel Ding that I am going to br uh, bring justice to your home. But he saw that his guys are in this you know, assassination. And uh, that, um, uh, Unfortunately, cruel states you know, is in that uh, assassination. And there are several actors who are just have relations with AKP. And he didn't you know, uh, act about justice about ranting. For four years, they said these are the ones from the Algenekon uh, community, let's say. Then some of them afterwards, when he had a fight with the Gulen movement, he said Gulenists were the you know, were responsible about ranting, but he never, you know, uh, he never uh, put his power to be behind this you no know, case to find justice at all. He just used this case to just change the bureaucracy. That's it. But all. Uh, no, some assassinations, they say, were stopped those days about Orhan Pamuk, about Elif Shafak, because in the state, there are different powers. Now, some of them thought Orhan Pamuk should be killed, and some of them uh, were not in favor of that. And they, they just warned Orhan Pamuk to leave the country for a period. But it, it didn't work for granting. All of them uh, had the same view, same idea that Hranting should be killed because Hranting was dangerous. So I can say all the fractions in the state were pro uh, of the assassination of the Hranting, unfortunately. But we, as the democrats of this Turkey, are still uh, just struggling for Hranting. No. There are, there are several assassinations in the Turkish history. And no one just were commemorated for 15 years with thousands of people. Only Hranting is the one. You know, we had, you know, let's say, Tahir al a Kurdish activist, only you know, assassinated six years ago. Uh, he, we are still commemorating him, but Hranting was assassinated, assassinated 15 years ago. And he is still being you know, uh, commemorated uh, with thousands of people and in the parliament and everywhere we are commemorating him. And asking justice for Hranting is still, uh, that demand is very strong in Turkey, I have to say about it. So um, uh, we all re uh, really Hranting something, we hope owed justice uh, to Hranting because he gave so much things to us. He gave us hope, he gave us courage, he gave us our name. And he, I can say before Hranting, everybody was swearing at us every day, saying that Armenian bastards and other terrible you know, swears at us. And unfortunately we had to stay silent. And after Hranting, those hate speeches are re really less and less, and nobody can dare to swear at us because I am in charge and other Armenians are in charge and um, we are silencing them nowadays. But before Hranting, it was so normal to swear at Armenians, 
and we were we had to stay silent uh, now, despite all the hate speeches against uh, Armenians. Now we are not silent at all because you no, know, I believe to stay silent is not something mean, doesn't mean that you are safe. You no, know? uh, to stay because the nationalists always shout at people, but if you have rights and you have to stand against them and say that you are racist and if you say about it and they must uh, they must shut up that is what i am trying to do um we as armenians let's say are people from anatolia people from mesopotamia people from salt caucasus and this is our land and we are the ones uh, let's say 60000 armenians left in turkey we are the ones who are struggling to stay in our motherland and uh, but we are silent against uh, unfortunately i have to say about it maybe only me and some armenians are speaking but most of the community are silent i can't blame them blame them to stay silent because they warn to run thing they want they are warning me but you know as i said to be silent is not something safe so we, I am struggling with my Turkish, Kurdish, and uh, democratic friends to make Turkey as a democratic country. And I believe only a democratic Turkey can give uh, granting justice and can establish real peace with Armenians, with the Armenian world, and with Armenia as well. That is what I believe. Uh, you can say Turkey, and I can say Turkey is living a very dark, dark winter. Uh, and um, uh, I, I'm not telling about this cold winter, but the, uh, about democracy, of course, we are living a very dark, dark winter. But you no, know, um, the bad news is that this, but you no, know, there are millions of people who are struggling for democracy. That is the good news. If there is struggle, there is hope, I believe. There is a strong struggle here going on in Turkey to make Turkey uh, as a democratic country. And uh, I am struggling in the parliament. I'm struggling in the streets. I'm representing Diyarbakir, Dikranagert. Is there anyone from Diyarbakir? I don't know, but uh, their ancestors are from Diyarbakir. I am representing that city. That city used to be an Armenian city as well. They were living with uh, Kurds only three, four years ago. My hope was to make Diyarbakir as a diverse city again. We renovated our church. We hoped that so many Armenians would turn to uh, know Diyarbakir. And can you believe there were thousands of people who came to our church, who came to me, telling that their ancestors were Armenians. They were the diverted to uh, Muslim, that they, their ancestors are Armenians. So we have millions of relatives in Anatolia. They know they, they are from Anatolia. And I believe this uh, wishes circle will end someday and we will make Turkey as a democratic country again. This is our struggle and this struggle should be making peace with the peoples in Turkey and make peace with the neighbors as well. Because the Greek people are not our enemies at all. They are the people from Anatolia. Uh, that, that nationalist ideology made them live Anatolia. And we can't be enemies with Armenia, of course. They are the people from Anatolia. Uh, nationalists made them live this country. So if we can have an open border, if we can normalize our relations with Armenia, and if we can normalize our relations with, uh, between diaspora and Turkey, I am sure uh, no, uh, one day we will have a dream to make uh, a uh, big you know, peace uh, between the Armenian world and Turkey. That is my, my dream. That is what I am trying to do. And I am, I am a dream about opening the borders and giving the border and gate name as a, as granting that is my you no know, dream I, I get i hope one day i'm going to reach that dream i'm just working on it of course uh, i'm not naive but i'm cautiously optimistic about this normalization process despite you no know, all the bad bad winter 
you know, I'm cautiously optimistic and I hope one day we will reach to that point. Of course, it's going to be hard, but as I said, there is a struggle. If there is struggle, there is hope. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Caro. That was a very intense um, uh, account of how things are for you in, in Turkey. The, of course, my first question is, how do you cope with, with, with the hate speech that you receive? And I'm, um, it's quite constant, isn't it? It must wear you down. How are you coping with that? What mechanism, what the psychological mechanism do you use? And do, does, does that help you? No, even yesterday I made a speech in the parliament, you know, and uh, you, are, you were not hearing it, but the nationalists were shouting at me. It's not, of course, it's not easy, you know. I, I didn't even use the genocide word. I said medzian, büyük felaket, you know, because it was some kind of granting was taking care of it, because he said, of course, I believe it's a genocide, but he was using the in the medium word, big felaket, other words, to just trying to make people understand that something bad has happened. Because to convince people, you have to you know, to you have to tell about it. Maybe the, it is our destiny. You no, know, we lived, we suffered the genocide, and we are the ones who are trying to convince people that something bad has happened. Because for a, for it happened 106 years ago, and. They know nothing about it. As Jesus Christ said, Father, they know nothing about it. And most of the people really knows nothing about it. But with Hrant, or with me, or with so many Armenians in Turkey, we reach to that, this point that most of the people in Turkey knows now that something bad has happened in 1915. Now, they are not ready to name it as genocide. But... One day, I'm sure, yeah, in Turkey, we are going to name it. But I am facing so many hate speeches, of course. Last year, it happened because of the uh, Nagorno-Karabakh uh, war. And uh, I opposed to that war. Maybe I was the only one who was opposing to that war. That is why I faced so many hate uh, speeches. And those hate speeches could turn to a hate crime as well. I had so many life threats. But, you know, uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't care about what is going to happen to me because I have no right to think about it. In Armenia last year, at least we have 4,000 you know, uh, martyrs, you no know, 4,000 young boys. You no, know, I'm already 49 years old. So I don't have a right to think about myself because if I think about myself, I know that we can live another vicious war. We can have live another vicious you know, hate crime against my people. So uh, I am the representative of the Armenians. So I have to take the risk to avoid you know, uh, biggest uh, threats against my people. That is what I am trying to do. Do you think that the economic crisis in Turkey at the moment is um, fascism is on the rise as a result of it or, or, or the contrary? No, um, it, it, we are living a terrible economic crisis as well. And Erdogan, as all the dictators does, is blaming the you know, uh, outsider powers, you know, the, uh, let's say, they are, the big powers are you know, just putting pressure on me. That is why we are living this crisis. He is blaming the uh, you know, ghosts, let's say. But you know, his voters believe in it. But it is less and less. Last year, maybe 50% of the people believed in him. Now it is only 30%. Because they know that you know, because of his policies, uh, they are losing their you know, uh, welfare and they are losing their freedom at, at the same time. So he is just losing, the, he has lost the popular vote. I'm sure if we have the fair elections next year or this year, uh, we will uh, get rid of one man ruled country and we will 
I am. I think we will be a better country, but you now there are risks as well. Uh, the opposition camp is somehow nationalist as well. Now Erdogan is a you no know, Muslim, you know, uh, non-democrat leader. But let's say the opposition camp they are secular, but they are not democrat as well. At the same time, they don't believe in diversity. So we are trying to convince uh, the opposition camp to just act uh, as a democrat because you no know, you have to show to the people that you no know, nationalism is no good so we have to be a democratic country that is what my party is trying to convince people to just turn to turkey as a democratic country but it is a struggle that we are giving Someone is asking how we can support you and uh, in your efforts from abroad. No, uh, from abroad. Um, uh, no we, we as Armenians uh, have every kind of right to be biased. That we, ha we have every right to say that Turk is a Turk. No, nothing can happen in this, that land. No, uh, Hranting struggled for that, but they killed him. We have every right to think about it, but no, uh, we don't have to, but I think we don't have the right to leave our motherland as, as a disaster, no. Because it is our motherland and, uh, and we have to really struggle for our country to be a democratic country because we have a pain. And for 106 years, we have an open wound and we haven't, it hasn't been healed. And I lost my grandmother, you know, without peace. That was, he, she was representing the first generation for me and I couldn't present peace or reconciliation for, to her or uh, a justice for, for her pain. And I lost my father without justice as well, you know. And I'm the third generation, and uh, I don't know, do we have the right really to just uh, leave our parents uh, to leave this uh, world without justice? So we need to think about it. And I believe only a democratic Turkey can recognize the Armenian genocide. Only a democratic Turkey can heal our wound. So if we can turn Turkey as a democratic country, and if you support me in this struggle, I, I believe that will be the biggest support to me because my goal is to make Turkey as a democratic country, to make my people and as Armenians live in peace with Turks and Kurds in my motherland, and be the democratic country, Turkey, I believe Turkey will recognize the Armenian genocide, not only the Armenian genocide, all the crimes against Kurds, against Assyrians, against the Greek people, against Alawis, and against everyone who uh, all this state uh, committed crimes against. So this, uh, the biggest support is to support the ones who are struggling for democracy in Turkey. Mm -hmm. um, there are two questions here which are linked, which is that, um, can you give us an idea how attitudes to Armenians in Turkey may vary between generations? So different uh, generations have different attitudes, perhaps. And the other is for the hundreds of thousands of Turks who demonstrated to protest the murder of Herantink, what is their prevailing mood and attitude 15 years later? So basically, have the attitudes changed and how? Yeah, uh, you know, 15 years ago, you know, it was a shock for, the, uh, for everyone, uh, the assassination of Ranting and hundreds of thousands of people attended to that funeral. But afterwards, Erdogan got you know, um, uh, more autocrat and the state committed so many crimes. The crimes normalized again. We had uh, no several assassinations and 
several hate crimes against the Kurds, against LGBT people, and uh, against Alevis. So the crimes are normalized. So yeah, we lost Sevak Balıkçı, as you know. We lost so many Kurds, unnamed Kurds. And nowadays, thousands of my friends are jailed, I have to say about it. They made an operation against my party. They jailed uh, so many central committee members, and they have jailed almost 8,000 members of my party. But I'm proud of my party, really, you know, because we are still standing still, and we are still struggling. Um, so these kind of you know, terrible um, uh, crimes are normalized. That is why maybe uh, people are still you know, thinking about ranting, but now nowadays uh, it is uh, it is an important assassination, but it is an assassination now in the Turkish history for so many people. But and moreover, ranting was a romantic, as I said. I believe if we can, um, we are going downwards. If we can make uh, this uh, you no know, democratic uh, level to upwards, I think people will more think about ranting because he ranting was a romantic, as I said. Uh, nowadays, there is no uh, room for romantics, I, I can say, because struggle is not romantic, really. It is, we, we are suffering. There's a question here which asks, are we here in the United States are Armenians and also building with other oppressed groups who face racism? You fight with Kurds, Assyrians, Greeks, women, LGBT, etc. Why do you think it's important to fight with other groups and minorities? Armenians must fight all forms of racism around the world. Do you agree? Of course, I agree. You no, know, Hrantink uh, said this, you know, Turks are my doctor and I am the doctor of the Turks. Because, you no, know, here, you no, know, some Armenians, if they haven't seen any Turk, they might ha hate Turks because they, Armenians believe Turks or Kurds killed their grandparents. And, Turk is a bad figure for them. But in Turkey, I live with the Turks, I live with the Kurds, you know, and I, I see them, they are you known grandparents, you know, most of them are apolo uh, showing their apologies to me and saying that we did a terrible thing. I am sorry, please accept my apologies, they say. So this heals me really. And they attend to the commemorations of the Armenian genocide and commemorations to the uh, to, to Hranting, and that heals me. Really, living with uh, Democrat Turks and Kurds is something which heals us who are living in Turkey. So, uh, as I said, all the Armenians, all the Turks are not bad at all. And the ones who are nationalists, they say, who think bad things about us, we maybe, this is our destiny to convince him as well, because they are poisoned by this state. As Raquel Dink said, you know, uh, that murderer was a baby. And this state makes babies as murderers. So we have to stop this state to make our babies into murderers, that maybe this is our destiny to fight against it. And to fight together really is, a, is something gives power to you really, because I am the only parliamentarian, Armenian parliamentarian in the parliament, you no? Know? There are, there are 600 parliamentarians. How could I speak in that parliament without the support of the democratic Turks and democratic Kurds? That is the question. So we need each other as Democrats. Why do you think uh, historically, I mean, let's look at the, just the 20th century, that, that this rabid nationalism and fascism is so strongly ingrained in the country that it seems, it seems to have it in its grip. Why do you think that is? Because Turkish, 
Turkish, uh, no, fascism have never lived a defeat. No, uh, in the fir- after the First World War, after we just suffered, the, I mean, genocide, the great powers, Brits, US, France, uh, appeased the Turkish state, despite the, you no, know, uh, I mean, genocide. Because of the Bolshevik revolution, they thought Turkey would turn uh, its face to the Bolshevik uh, uh, Russia. So let's forget about their main genocide. Let's forget about the, all the you know, uh, crimes which uh, this state did. Le- let's make Turkey establish its country despite all the you know, uh, crimes against humanity. So this state appointed uh, its bureaucracy with the, uh, with the uh, no, uh, ones who were responsible about the Armenian side. This bureaucracy, uh, they, they established this bureaucracy with them. So, and they put the names of Emir Pasha and Talat Pasha to the streets. Mm-hmm. So this uh, fascist you no know, uh, ideology have never lived a defeat afterwards. Let's think about it. If the Nazi Germany, after the Nazi Germany, let's say, Mm -hmm. Uh, The big powers just appeased Nazi Germany and let them continue and let them put Hitler's name, Goebbels' name to the streets. What kind of a uh, Germany it would be? This is the Turkey that we have in our hands, unfortunately. And the Western powers are, uh, including the Brits, of course, are responsible for this appeasement. Uh, another question from Mike Kasapian. Um, do you think there should be an acknowledgement of lands appropriated by the state by Turkey from Armenians? For example, my ancestor, the Kasapian family, had their house in Ankara seized from them by the Bulgurzade family, which later became Chankaya Koshku. I've had Turkish lawyers contact me to try and make claims against this, but I can't see that how it would be safe for me or lawyers to pursue this? This is a kind of a classic question, but. Um, of course, you know, um, uh, the, as Hrant said, treasure was the people. You know, we lost the people and uh, including that, of course, we had so many property. But you no, know, for me, when I go to Malatya, my motherland, I, uh, I see that I lost almost everything. What if they give me a property? What is going to happen? Mm-hmm. So maybe uh, we need to somehow, of course, it is your right to sue the Turkish state about it. You can do it and you can uh, win that case somehow. But what is the big win? We have to think about it to uh, win our motherland maybe the maybe should be our goal because if that country doesn't turn into a democratic country let's say your pain your wound will be open and you will suffer because of it and you will just keep your identity as armenians we do it for 106 years Blaming, uh, we will continue our identity with blaming the Kurds, Turks, let's say. This is somehow sickness, as Haram thing said, uh, taught the same thing. So to get rid of this, we have to uh, you know, get rid of this na- fascist Turkey. And we have to make Turkey as a democratic country. Then, of course, we have right to sue the state uh, to have our rights, of course, that is going to happen somehow. But no, it, it had been three generations. Most of our properties are in the hands of peoples, in the Turks and Kurds. So to just sue the state is something different and to sue the people, maybe it, we will get to that point, but it is just, it should be just after we make Turkey as a democratic country. Uh, no, uh, uh, the judiciary in Turkey is opening s- several cases against me just for my speeches, let's say. Mm. If those judges just there, how can you have your rights? But if we can't change Turkey, 
those judges will change and we can have our rights. We have to think about it that way, maybe. Do you have a growing part? Is your party a growing party? Um, no. Do you, you are you optimistic about, about that? Yes and no, uh, two ways. No, let's say if you are a soccer team and you have Ronaldo in your team and if they just jail Ronaldo, what is what happens to your team? And if, you, if they just put chains in the goalkeeper, what happens to that party? And if they jail all the football team and make them, okay, you play. And if the referee always you know, uh, does terrible things against you, what happens to your party? You no, know, despite all the repressions against my party, uh, my party is still functioning. And we have at least, we will have at least 15% of the votes, but with a fair elections. And our goal is to establish a democratic coalition with the environmentalists, with women movement, uh, movements, and with LGBT uh, activists, and with all the you know, activists who struggle for democracy. And our goal will be to have more than 20% of the votes. But you now, as you saw uh, in Belarus, in other countries, as you know, dictators might rig the elections as well. That will be uh, one more goal of us to have the fair elections. Mm -hmm. if, we if we have the fair elections, I think we will get rid of the one man ruled country. Thank you, Noemi. Uh, thank you, Garo. My question, can you please give an insight into public opinion within both Armenian and Turkish communities in Turkey in relation to the normalization process? No, normalization, normalization means normalizing the relations. No, let's say Turkey and Greece has problems as well, as you know, no, in the Aegean Sea, in Cyprus, and there are, yeah, Turkey and Greece have several problems, but we have the ambassadors in each other's countries. Our borders are open. We are doing the direct trade and we have direct flights and we have cultural relations, economic relations, despite all the problems that we have between Turkey and Greece. Normalization means this, you know, having open borders with Turkey and Armenia, ha having direct flights, having direct you know, economic relations and cultural relations and having ambassadors in each other's country. This is it. No, normalization doesn't mean no, the normalization process will not solve all the problems that we have between Turkey and Armenia. And it doesn't have any preconditions at all. Some of the people think that there are preconditions, but there are no preconditions at all. So as Anna announced, I will, I will take every kind of responsibility for this normalization process to uh, achieve its goals. Because no, I believe if you have problems with your neighbors, and if that door is closed, you can't solve that, those problems at all. But if you have an open border, if you have relations, you can solve those problems, you know? So, so that is my goal. That, that was Hranting's goal. Hranting had a dream that if the, uh, we have that border open, I will just uh, make bar at that you know, uh, border. And uh, I will just dance at that border, he said. And I offered to the parliament, if we have that uh, border open, no, I hope that that border's name will be Hranting. That, that is the most suitable name. And I, I hope we'll get to that uh, point one day. Someone asked, what is your favorite memory of Hranting? Um, you know, uh, Hranting uh, started to write uh, about us and that gave us, gave me hope. You know? And my father passed, you know, and I had to deal with our family business. And I had a business card. You know? two, I had two cards. One was Garo Pailan, the other was Kaya Pailan, showing that uh, I, if I have a nationalist one, I, am, I was giving the Kaya Pailan. A business card. And one day I went to Hranting and sh showed that card. 
Grant Ahparik, uh, now after you, you gave me courage and I am just throwing this you know, uh, Kaya Pailan business cards to the waste basket. That was very important for me. As I said, he gave again my name and I, I never used uh, Kaya name again after uh, granting. Uh, he gave me that hope and uh, he gave that courage to millions of uh, Armenians, I'm sure. Not only the Armenians, he gave hope to the Kurds, Turks, uh, Turkish and Kurdish Democrats as well. There are so many messages of a thanks to you, of giving you courage, of giving you support and love. Uh, I, I can't read them all, but I want you to be aware that there's an absolute tsunami of support messages here. Um, is there Thanks, anything you would like to end by saying uh, uh, to us that, uh, you know, free? <laughs> As uh, uh, that okay, uh, I want to I thank you all, really. Um, and I want to thank the Armenian Institute in London. That is very important. And um, uh, when I look at you, the faces here, really, uh, it is so emotional for me because I know your ancestors are from Turkey. Maybe you are from Malatya, Kayseri, or Izmit, Diklanagert. I don't know. Most of you have you know, uh, their roots from here. And uh, you might think that Turkey is a lost case. You have every right to think about it. But no, uh, uh, I think it is not like that. One day Turkey will turn to, into a democratic country. And it's, I might not see it. I don't know. I hope I'll see that day. But even if I don't see that day, somebody will continue this struggle, continue this fight, and we will get to that point. Because Turkey, Anatolia, Mesopotamia, South Caucasus, we don't deserve this. Our history you know, does not deserve this. We used to live as a, as a diverse you know, country, diverse Anatolia. We, Anatolia does not deserve a uh, you know, nationalist atmosphere. So we will get to that point, I'm sure, and this struggle will go on. Don't worry about it. Thank you very much indeed, Dara. We could talk for hours, but I know that this is your 13th, and maybe this is the last <laughs> presentation you have to make. But we would like to um, play the clip of you talking about the gate. May we do that, please? Bakın, bugün nerede Ermenistan sınırının açılması konuşuluyor Ayşenur Hanım. Ve Hrant Dink'in en büyük hayallerinden bu, biri buydu. Ermenistan sınırının açılmasıydı. Yeah. Ermenistan'la normal diplomatik ilişkilerin kurulması. Elbette sorunlar olabilir. Yunanistan'da da sorunlar var ama sınır kapımız kapalı değil. Ermenistan'la da sınırlar açılsın derdi ve açıldığı gün ben orada halay çekeceğim derdi. Umarım ki bu e, hayalini Hrant Dink'in hep beraber orada gerçekleştiririz. Yani er, Ermeniler, Türkiye'liler olarak o sınırda hep beraber halay çekeriz. Ve benim bir hayalim daha var. O sınır kapısını keşke açsak. Ve sınır kapısının adını da Türkiye'li bir Ermeni olan Hrant Dink'in adını versek. Böyle bir hayalim de var. Umarım Aa. bunu gerçekleştiririz ve Türkiye ve Ermenistan halkları olarak barışırız. Fantastic. Thank you. That was a very, very nice ending. <laughs> I hope that it will come true. And, and we do invite you to come to London and talk to us. In I would love to. I would love to. <laughs> Um, we will just play a, a little message from uh, Emit Gavanch now to, for this evening. And also we remember Kavala and we know that he's still being held. Yeah, uh, we unfortunately. Have, we have hopes for him as well. Can we have the um, the uh, Emit Gavanch, uh, please? Merhabalar. Hrant'ın konuşmalarından bir film yapmak benim şu dünyadan gitmeden mutlaka gerçekleştirmek istediğim şeylerden biriydi. Bu çapta da başka ne var şu an aklıma gelmiyor açıkçası. Fakat bunu çok uzun süre yapamadık. Malzemesi elimizde olmasına ve birçoğunu da zaten biliyor olmamıza rağmen ben bunun başına oturabilecek ve haftaları, ayları onu konuşmana dinleye Rek geçirebilecek cesareti anca bulabildim. E, bu biraz da memleket şartlarımızın yarattığı ve salgın e, şartlarının yarattığı 
koy vermiştik halinden de oldu. Onun bir faydası da oldu yani. Aman ne olursa olsun deyip giriştim. E, filmi izleyen çok kişinin de söylediği gibi onu sakin bir şekilde izlememiz bizim çok zor. Çünkü çok büyük bir kayıptı o. Çok büyük bir imkandı, çok büyük bir fırsattı. E, Türkiye içinde, bence Ermeni toplumu içinde. E, bunun kıymetini bilemedik ve aslında varlığını bir takım suçları ya da işte acımasızlıkları başkalarını görmezden gelmeyi empatisizliği sürdürmeye borçlu olanlar onun varlığına bu kadar tahammül edebildiler. Halbuki o en başta bugün çözümsüzlüğün baş aktörleri gibi gözüken insanlara da bir çıkış yolu öneriyordu. Ve üstelik de bunu hiçbir şekilde soykırım gerçeğini bir kenara itmeden yapmaya çalışıyordu. Türkiye'de Hrant'ın oynadığı rol çok önemli bir roldür. Normal olarak meselenin farkında olmayan birçok insan onun sayesinde ve onun gösterdiği makul çizgiden daha kolaylıkla soruna yaklaşabildi. Bu çok önemli bir şeydi gerçekten. Kişi olarak da Hrant çok büyük bir kayıptı. Çünkü çok özel bir insandı. E, gündelik davranışları içerisinde bir entelektüelden çok bir halk adamı idi. E, inatçıydı. E, kavgalaşmayı çok seven biriydi. E, ısrarcıydı. Ama bir yandan da çok meraklı, öğrenmeye açık e, ve insanlara dokunabilen biriydi. Yani onun bir ortama girip birisiyle samimi olmadan oradan çıkması pek görülmüş bir şey değildi aslında. Ee, yani onu bir şekilde yaşatmak hem boynumuzun borcuydu hem de çok istediğim bir şeydi. Bunun fikrini biz yıllarca önce konuşmuştuk. Yani böyle bir şey yapsak. Çünkü yazıları aslında Hrant'ı tam anlatmıyor. Yani onun ses tonu, jestleri, mimikleri bunlar onu en çok anlatıyor. Ee, bunları bir şekilde yansıtsak ama bunu da böyle çok alışılagelmiş ve beklendiği üzere bir takım böyle hamasetle bezeyerek falan değil de başka türlü yapsak yani ona ekleyeceğimiz şeyler onun varlığına, pratiğine sözlerine biraz daha derinlik, yaygınlık katsa gibi düşünmüştük. İşte ben böyle bir şey yapmaya çalıştım. Umuyorum ki iyi olmuştur. Onun anısını da ile yaşatacak şekilde olmuştur. E, filmin adı bana çok soruluyor. Onu, onu da izah etmeye çalışayım. Gerçi izah ne kadar muhtaç onu bilmiyorum ama hoş bir hikayesi de var arkasında. E, filmde bir yerde onun odasında gazete okurken göründüğü bir sekans var. Orada bir arkasında açık ekran var. Bir de bilgisayarlarla hiçbir zaman zaten barışamamıştı. Bilgisayar ekranında da bir tane alert var, uyarı var. Word programını açacak kadar belleğim yok diye. Memory Tool of for Word diye. Ben onu Memory Tool of for Word çevirdim kafamda. Ve yani Grant'ın sözlerini e, sindirebilmek için bir miktar hafızaya da ihtiyacımız o, olduğunu kastetmek istedim. Türkiye'de yapılan da zaten tam da bu hafızayı kapatmaktır. E, onu kapatınca e, geçmişle ilgili yeni bilgi alamaz hale geliyorsunuz. Ya da bazı durumlarda da alacağınız bilgiden korktuğunuz için bilerek kapatıyorsunuz. Bunlara bir göndermesi olsun istedim. E, şundan ötürü içim çok rahat. E, i̇nternet devrindeyiz. Bir film bir kere yapılıp bir yere konunca artık onun yok edilmesi mümkün değil. Şu andan itibaren bana bir şey olsa da bu film kalacak. Bundan ötürü içim çok rahat. E, herkesin... E, ee, dediğim gibi Hrant'a layık olduğu önemi vererek e, izlemesini dilerim. Anyway, I do, do urge everyone to to watch the film online. It, it, it's, it's extraordinary the, the the the different ways that he approaches the questions and how he how convincing he is and how how dedicated. Garp Haylan. Thank you so very much. We wish you safety and health and success. And you know that we are here to support you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.
Well, thank you, Maritza. Thank you, everyone, for joining. My name is Nick Matteo. I'm the program manager uh, at the Armenian Institute in London, and it's up to me just to say a few final words. Um, so please do check our uh, please do check our website um, if you're interested in our work. Uh, we believe very strongly in the principles that uh, Garo has been speaking about throughout the talk today, um, starting next week with events on the shared musical traditions of all the peoples of the region, the music and the tunes that hopefully one day we'll be able to dance Halai and Govend together on the current borders between the republics of Armenia and Turkey. Um, and please do also think about um, Please do also think about supporting the Armenian Institute if you're able to. We're only able to survive with the support of our friends and our communities. Um, but thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you, friends. Shad shad nora kalan kan kerneres. Chok teshekuler arkadashlaramiz u gelik supas hevalno. Uh, we hope to see you again, and especially thank you so much to Garo. Thank you so much to Nuritza for chairing this evening so so wonderfully. And let's close with a collective hope, a collective wish, a collective prayer for a realization of France's dream for a democratic Turkey in which all its peoples, all its identities can live freely and develop together with dignity. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you.